You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for our first big conversation uh, today. And we're basically following up on a conversation that began, it's actually began you know, many years ago, but really on Tuesday last week, we know that 17,000 governors gathered in Asaba Delta State, you know, basically to decide what next steps to take uh, regarding open grazing and insecurity in their state. Now, we know that the resolutions reached by the governors of southern Nigeria and uh, Nigerian state last week are still reverberating across the country. The most talked about of them is the ban on open grazing across all 17 southern states. In response to this, the Mieti Allah Cattle Breeders Association of Nigeria, MACBAN, wants northern governors to work out a solution for nomadic cattle rarers. It is recommending the reactivation of hundreds of uh, grazing reserves in the north so that pastoralists can settle in them. Now, the National Secretary of the Association, Magban, is joining us this morning, Baba Othman, uh, you know, joining us from Yobe State. Good morning, Mr. Othman. Thanks for joining us. Mr. Othman, can you hear me? Yeah, good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. So um, we've read what you've been saying about the situation. You said, you know, the southern governors have met and that the northern governors should also meet, you know, speak with one voice and have a resolution. What, what sort of uh, resolution do you think the northern governors should, should, you know, decide in response to this? Uh, well, when you say uh, the governors are chief security officers of their states, Governors are by implication custodians of lands in their state. Uh, so where a situation like this is raised by 17 Southern governors, I think this calls for a serious attention. Uh, so that's why I am calling on the Northern governors to open up the discussion with their Southern counterparts so that they could come up uh, with a situation, with a resolution that can be generally acceptable to both farmers and herders uh, in their respective uh, states. And moreover, these governors do have a common forum uh, with the federal government where they meet at the National Council of States. I thought this issue uh, should have been discussed at the National Council of States um, rather than making it look a sort of a regional or a sectional problem, considering the current security situation uh, in the country now. And these pastoralists that we talk about are also citizens of this country. Um, they also suffer uh, from the hands of criminals. Coming to the north, whenever you hear about banditry or cattle wrestling, uh, the, the pastoralists remain at the receiving end of these uh, vices, despite the fact that the, 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 their use are mostly found among the criminals. So crime doesn't, doesn't discriminate between tribe and religion. There's nobody that is not found in crime among the communities uh, of this country. And you cannot call an entire race or an entire community for crimes perpetrated by few. So my call on the northern governors is to is to discuss with their southern counterparts, make them see reason, make them see and respect the constitution of this country, make them see these pastoralists are also bona fide citizens of this country, make them also understand that not all pastoralists uh, are criminals. Uh, let them come up with, with, with something that can be generally acceptable to both the north and the south, and to both farmers and herders in the country for the interest of peace and unity of Nigeria. Okay, um, there's also something mentioned, you know, in the write-up, and it is about activating the grazing reserves in the north. Uh, quickly also share, you know, what um, you're referring to there. Um, is there, you know, enough of the of grazing reserves in the northern states that can uh, that can um, accommodate all, you know, herders across Nigeria? Yeah. Um, uh, by by records, we have over 400 areas designated for grazing in the northern half of the country that are full grazing reserves. 
Uh, these areas are areas set aside for grazing in respect of, of, of the harvest. And these areas all put together covers an area of about 5 million hectares. Uh, these grazing results are there by due to things like the climate change, uh, desert uh, encroachment, um, neglect on the part of past administrations. These grazing results were allowed to to, to become useless, sort of, because the dams that are in the grazing reserves no longer hold water. Uh, the grasses that are there have given way to unpalatable ones that cannot be consumed by the cows because of uh, lack of maintenance. And most of some of these grazing reserves have inf infrastructures in them. They have dams, they have nomadic schools, they have veterinary clinics, they even have milk collection centers in some of them. But all these things, due to lack of maintenance in the north, they were allowed to dilapidate. So all that we are saying, why can't the northern governors give attention to, to the development of these grazing reserves as an interim measure? I mentioned, I re emphasize as an interim measure, because the only option out of this crisis of farmer harder in this country is for the hardest to become settled in one place. Uh, either under an arrangement or rent or whatever model you call it, but there has to be a settlement model for the hardest in the country for us to achieve a, 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 a lasting peace between farmers and hardest. But ranching or, set, or whatever settlement model is, is going to be a long term uh, to be achieved. So in the interim, before attending to, to that as a process, why can't we begin to develop those areas designated for grazing that we have in the northern part of the country? Uh, even if we want to do ranching, even if we want to do a model of um, ranching or, or any form of a settlement, it also requires a land. These are the land that can be used to establish whatever model of ranching you have in the country. The grazing reserves are there. Why can't the northern governors uh, pay attention? Why can't the federal government assist the northern governors so that attention can be paid on the development of these grazing reserves? After all, what is pushing the pastoralists to the southern part of the country? Is it not for water and pasture? They move for the, on daily basis looking for water and pasture for their house because this is all they know. They inherited a primitive system of annual harbantry from their forefathers because there was no attempt to, to try to train them, to try to transform them into the modernized ones. They don't know it. They don't even know the benefit of the modernized one. They, they are still holding the outdated species of cows that are not weighing much and are giving output of milk of not, not, not more than five liters. So they don't know. Why can, why, why, because the first administration, the, the first government did not do anything to transform their the livestock uh, business into a modernized one. Still, they, 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 they value the quantity of the cow more than the quality of the cow because they, they inherited it from their parents. They also want to die and leave so many cows for their children to inherit. Not minding the quality of the cow, they don't very much care about the quality of the cow. What are their concerns? is the quantity because it is the number of the cow you have in a society that 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 that, that gauges your importance in the society you live so you see these are things that can be done gradually through sensitization through trainings through the and when you develop the develop the grazing reserves you provide water and pasture they won't go anywhere they will be attracted to come and stay in those grazing reserves okay. and it is only when we get them staying in their large numbers in one place, that the government will have the opportunity to train them, to teach them other skills, to, 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 give, them the, to give their children the opportunity for education okay. and what have you. But where you leave them, roam the wild, looking for free faster in a scattered way, you can't. Mm. It's not possible for the federal government to train them. It's not possible for any government to even uh, teach them other skills other than the uh, livestock uh, uh, rearing as the only source of livelihood that they have. Mm -hmm. It's not possible for government to even educate their children. So settlement is the final option out of this problem that we have. Okay. But as a long term, but in the process of the settlement, let's begin to develop these grazing reserves. Let's make them attractive to the pastoralists. 
so that they could come and say, it is only when we give them in their large numbers that we give them education, we give them training, we take good care of their cows, we teach them the benefits of modernized animal husbandry. We show them what 50 cows can do to them uh, that 500 cows cannot do to them in the present modern world. So these are the things that we are calling on the Northern governors to pay attention to. All right, so Mr. Osman, you've talked about how there's actually grazing reserves in northern states and how you know there's they're encrypted to schools and hospitals and you know all the things they need to make sure they settle but the lack of maintenance has made these pastoralists move from the north to the south so are you basically exactly. saying it's a failure on the part of the northern governors why the situation is what it is today you say i said are you then saying it's a failure on the part of the northern governors to maintain the grazing reserves to educate the pastoralists that's causing what, what you know the well, issue we have today yeah, uh, yes to, to some extent yes but this is a problem they inherited from the first succeeding administration these grazing results were allowed to develop dead over a long um period of them let me give you an example of one grazing reserve in plato state in was a grazing reserve and once a grazing reserve, we have 18 dams, 18 water dams, that none of them is working today. They are all silted with sand. They no longer hold water. So this is the picture in what in whatever grazing reserve you visit today in the northern part of the country. The dams are there, but they don't hold water. The 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 the, the, the palatable grasses that the cows consume are no longer there because. The cows mostly come from the dry season hungry. So in the first or second week of the rain, immediately the new grasses begin to come out. They are forced by hunger to, to, to begin to feast on those new grasses. And by feasting on them, they uproot them from their roots. So the grasses were not allowed to develop, uh, to grow and drop seeds for next season. So through this process, all the grassy reserves had become useless they no longer provide the palatable grass that are used by the cow so the grazing reserves are gradually taken over by unpalatable ones that are allowed to, to grow develop drop drop seeds for next season so the unpalatable ones are taken over the entire forest so mm. this is the problem that we have okay. so why can't we make them attractive so to some extent honestly uh, I see it as a failure of the of, of the northern government to develop um, uh, these great results for the interests of the hardest we have in this country. Okay, so so Mr. Othman, you're basically saying, you know, now that we, we basically all agree on like, or we understand your point of view, are you then saying the response have been seen from, you know, the Senate and other quarters blaming southern governors for taking a stand to ban open grazing in their states should end? I mean, people should stop blaming southern governors for taking this decision because the North can actually do something to fix it. I didn't get your question very well. I said, are you, are you then saying, if, if you agree that the issue we're having right now with open grazing is a fault of the northern governors, are you then saying people should stop blaming southern governors for deciding to end open grazing in their states? Uh, well, um, as far as this question is concerned, I don't have much comments on it. Um, I don't know why the Southern governors decided for that. Uh, but whatever is the reason, all we are saying is uh, they should also understand that uh, not all the pastoralists are criminals. Okay. One. Two, they should also, also understand that these pastoralists are bona fide citizens of this country whose rights and privileges are also supposed to be protected. Uh, this is all we are saying. But um, since they have come together, come out with a common position, I also, as a civilized person, say that this position should not be ignored by the, by the northern governors. The northern governors must sit with their counterparts mm. and brainstorm, see how they can come out with a common position that can be workable for both the north and the south that can be workable in each and every state of the country. Oh. Either open grazing, either anti-open grazing, either settlement, whatever they decided, at least there has to be a common position between all the governors for the peace and unity of this country. All right, I'm going to start with asking, you know, if this, um, you know, if your views to, you know, this morning 
Um, and of course, the views of Mieti Ala uh, encouraging the northern governors to activate the grazing reserves or reactivate the grazing reserves in northern Nigeria. If this is a, you know, um, a view that maybe you know, Mieti Ala should have had a long time ago, because I remember in 2018, Mieti Ala was completely against the Benue state governor for uh, banning open grazing in the state. And Mieti Ala had said that that was going to lead to crisis and some other, other things. So should Mieti Ala have you know, remembered uh, the grazing reserves and activating of uh, grazing reserves as early as 2018? Mr. Othman, can you hear us? Hello? Can you hear us clearly? Yeah, you say what? I'm asking if the decision that Mieti Ala is taking now, and of course they're um, um, com uh, asking the northern governors to activate and reactivate grazing reserves in the north, shouldn't they have had this same um, reaction in 2018 when the Benue state governor bla banned uh, open um, um, grazing uh, in the state? You see, you see the, the law of Benue state, as far as we are concerned, uh, we don't think the law uh, was made, was intended to correct um, these things. Because even by the mere title of the law, the law says uh, uh, anti-open grazing and renting establishment uh, law. So two things are involved there, stopping open grazing and establishing uh, renting. So whoever is responsible for drafting this law has to has these two things in mind. So you you cannot uh, implement the, the the open grazing prohibition without the establishment of the rights. So there has to be a time to be given for whoever wants to establish rights in Benue before you even begin to implement the the the, the open grazing prohibition. But what happens in Benue is. The implementation of the open grazing prohibition even was our given attention to the establishment of ranches. So these are the loopholes we have in the Benue law. And if you go into the law, if you see the, the, the criteria set aside for one to acquire rent, it's almost totally impossible for our personalists to acquire ranches in Benue. So we believe the law is, is deliberately uh, done to test away all pastoralists in Benue State, and they are all out of Benue State now. So, um, but for 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 the northern governors, this has been what we have been advocating for. And leaving the northern governors, coming to the federal government, can the federal government come up with a policy that can make it mandatory on all these governors to begin to do things that will correct all these things? We have a national assembly. Why can't the national assembly sit together and come up with a legislation that will lay this matter to rest once and for all for the interests of this country? This is an issue that has started gradually, but it has now a national security situation in the country, not only in the southern part of the country, even in the northern part of the country, the problem is there. So why can't the national assembly give this problem attention so that they can come out with a legislation that will lay this matter to rest. Why can't the current government through the National Executive Council of State, since with these uh, state governors, so that they could all discuss, brainstorm, come up with a common position that can be acceptable, generally acceptable and workable for all the farmers in all the states um, across the country. We already have a lot of security problems in our hands that will not allow any other new thing to, to come and also add injury to, to the wounds that we already have. Well, even the southern governors have a lot of security situations. It's always on the news that police stations are being attacked in, in so many states by, by some groups. The houses are attacked by some groups. Why, why can't they pay attention on these groups as well? Uh, rather than diverting attention create another problem. Well, but whatever it is, all we are saying is let the northern governors for the interest of peace uh, sit with their counterparts so that they could come up with a common position. Let the federal government as well be up and doing in bringing an end to this farmer harder conflict or this open grazing or, or settlement order or whatever you call it. We are saying this because we believe 
the the hardest are the worst affected by all this crisis we see in the country. But because it is not reported in the media, they are the worst affected by cattle wrestling because they are the sole owners of cattle in this country. Today, they lost over 3 million cows as a result of cattle wrestling. So many families were rendered poor. Today, they are the worst kidnapped. Before you kidnap one personality in the city, I believe you me, 10, 20, 30, 50 of them must have been kidnapped in the forest on a daily basis. They silently take the cow to the market, sell, come and pay ransom to free others themselves or their families. They are the ones affected by banditry. You may have heard on a daily basis that whenever bandits attack, you hear of they wrestle so many cattle. Who are the owners of these cattle that they wrestle? They are the pastoralists. So, so we are really in a, in a situation in one other hand, we are seen as culprits while we see ourselves as typical victims of this, uh, of this crisis. I can give you an example in Niger State in one day, in, at the beginning of February, in just one day, 1,721 cows were arrested in one day and they have vanished in thin air, no traces up to today. Just imagine how many families were being affected by this. So um, this has shown that, that some of the media are not carrying it because some of the media houses are lopsided, because some of the media houses are even the ones that are aggravating this problem. They have almost succeeded in profiling us, preferring the pastoralists for genocide. It has almost started now because of the media negative profiling. So, um, I mean, we are, the pastoralists are the worst affected by this crisis. But people don't know. So all that we are saying, the only option and solution out of this crisis is for these pastoralists to get settled so that they could also enjoy, I mean, things like any other citizen. Okay. They should get settled so that their children can be educated. They should get settled so that they will be trained on other skills apart from the, the, the cattle rearing as their only source of livelihood. They should get settled so right. that we'll, they could we'll know like the to... benefit of having few cows that are beneficial rather than having a lot of cows that are not beneficial. All right, we well, should get uh, so that they can Mr. also Hoffman. learn modernize animal husbandry system in the world today. Yes, uh, well, we would we'll see how, of course, this message is uh, passed to the northern governors, like you've said. Uh, the message is directed to the northern governors to activate the grazing reserves in their states and stop waiting on uh, the federal government. Um, that's a message from me, Etiala, to northern governors. Uh, Nata Felix? Yes, indeed. And uh, we know that... You know, the other group, the Mieti Allah uh, Hore group, is basically saying that condemning the South for this decision and saying they would, you know, get their own uh, northern state and break away from Nigeria if, you know, the southern governors decide to ban open grazing in their state and, you know, basically uh, chase them out of the south. I mean, this is what the uh, Mieti Allah uh, Katohori is saying here, and that's by the national secretary of the group, Al Hassan Saleh. Do you, do you agree with what they're saying? Uh, well, uh, as you have said, this is a statement coming from the other Mieti Allah group, which is the Mieti Allah Kautal Ori. Me, I represent the Mieti Allah Kautal Breeder Association of Nigeria. So if you have any question that needs a clarification or an answer, why can't you direct it to the secretary of that group? So no, that I mean, do you, do, you support, do you support your colleagues in what you they're have, saying? You have, you have had my position. I have said my position. My position remains the, the, the decision of the southern governors must not be ignored. My position remains the northern governors have to open discussion with the southern or the southern counterparts so that they can come up with a position. My position remains the federal government has to come out with something that can solve this problem. My position remains the National Assembly must try as a matter of necessity and agency to come up with a legislation that will lay this matter at rest. Uh, this is the position, my position as the National Secretary of Mieta and Lakatan Breeder Association. So well, if you have any question that is going to be regarding the other group, um, why can't you contact the other group so that you can get more clarification from them? Oh, well, we just wanted to know, you know, if you know you have a similar. You have, you have, uh, you have already <laughs> had my position. So this remains my position. For the other group, let them speak for their own position as well. 
Okay. All right. And um, I think finally, we would like your quick thoughts on uh, President Muhammad Buhari and, of course, uh, you know, the way that the presidency has handled uh, the issue concerning uh, cattle breeders and the issue concerning uh, open grazing in the last uh, few years. You say? I'm asking finally about uh, the president, Muhammad Buhari. I want your reactions to the way that the presidency has handled this issue in the last couple of years. Do you think that's also part of the blame? Uh, well, you see, uh, this, is, this is a problem that he also inherited. Uh, this is a problem that was allowed to linger for, for, for quite some time, even before the emergence of this um, government. And we believe this government uh, has tried to, to solve this problem by coming up with the National Lifestyle Development Plan by trying to implement the document of National Lifestyle Development Plan in some states. I also believe that some states are all already beneficiaries of the National Lifestyle Transformation Plan. But what I want you to understand today, uh, over 350 billion naira was spent uh, as an intervention to the agronomy subsector of, of agriculture, neglecting totally the livestock subsector. Up till now, we have not had of, up to about 50 million spent on the livestock subsector of the economy. Let there be a balance between the agronomy and livestock subsector by the federal government. Let the federal government pay attention to also put a decision, put a lot of intervention on livestock so that they could strike a balance between, between the agronomy subsector and the livestock subsector uh, of the economy. But this problem is a problem that was inherited by this government. And for, for quite some time, we have not seen a government that has even tried to begin to solve this problem by trying to establish modern ranching. It is only the Buhari government that has tried to establish modern ranching because they had the, the, the National Livestock Transformation Plan that is being implemented today in states like Adamawa, Gombe, um, Yobe, and some other states. So the, 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 the federal government is funding for the establishment of, of a settlement model in some states. It has started. But then, uh, this is going to be a long term something. In the interim, let the state government pay attention to, to, to the development of the grazing reserves so that they could be attractive to the pastoralists. Um, right. So that, and even if the ranches are established, uh, how many pastoralists can they contain? Mm. They cannot contain more than 5% of the pastoralists we have in the particular state. But the beauty of it is, it will serve as a model for the other pastoralists to begin to see the benefits of having uh, exotic cows that give an output of milk of about 30 to 50 liters of milk per cow per day against the ones that they have that they are given just three liters of milk per day. Okay. And there will be opportunity to see a cow that is weighing maybe 500 to 600 kilograms per cow against the one that we have that are weighing a maximum of maybe 100 kilograms or 200 kilograms of meat. So the model will give them the opportunity to even uh, begin to learn how to also grow their own grass, their own pasture. They will, they will begin to learn how to acquire land to, to also begin to establish their own ranches. Uh, last two years, after our annual end of year meeting, we have making mandatory on all the state chairmen of Mieti Allah to acquire land, even if it is one hectare. Let us begin to develop our own small ranches so that the other pastoralists can learn from us. Let's oh, acquire well, one, man. two, three hectares of land. Let's send through a local fence. Let's sink our own well. Let's propagate our own pasta. Let's begin to produce pasta. Let's keep two, three, five cows in our own small ranches. So let the pastoralists who are roaming the world begin to see how our cows are becoming fattened, how our cows are going out to our millions. Because the movement is also emaciating them, is 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 stopping their milk, is is depriving their milk outputs, is also uh, making them skinny without much meat. So oh, we have made it mandatory of our leadership at the national and state to begin to establish small ranches so that we will begin to teach our uh, members, for example, let them begin to see it from us, that we have small ranches that we have established, and our cows are looking good, and we take care of them, 
and uh, they are all Absolutely. daily eating fresh grass and taking good water. So Baba Othman, this, this, this model uh, that the federal government is funding, they are very good, but it's a long-term something in Abu, the interim. Abu, Abu. Thank you very Let much. Let the begin to develop this grazing reserve. Mm. All right, Baba Othman, um, very refreshing hearing your views. Thank you very much for speaking with us this morning. Thank we'll you again. We look forward to, of course, uh, having another conversation with you as quickly as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Also. Thank you. Okay, so basically now it's uh, to wait and see what the Northern Governors would say about this, if they would, you know, meet, you know, sometime soon. And let's hear their position regarding reviving the grazing reserves, like Mr. Othman has said, and uh, amongst other decisions that the Southern Governors, you know, reached last Tuesday. Yeah. So yes, we'll take a break here and continue our discussion of national issues when we return.